Now, we always kick off CES in a big way, and this year is no exception. Our opening keynote is Sony, a brand synonymous with consumer electronics. In any consumer technology category you can think of, Sony either already has a product people love, is currently driving product innovation, or plans to make a product that will redefine the next wave of the consumer technology experience. Sony leads the way in shaping how consumers enjoy their music, movies, TV shows, and games, and delivers new ways for consumers to receive information. And Sony has the most options for consumers to create their own content and then watch it on any type of device. From the earliest days of the Trinitron and the Walkman to the dawn of the digital and high definition areas, to 3D and now ultra high definition TV and high resolution audio, and across any type of platform, Sony is always a leader out in front. And of course, Sony always has one of the most exciting exhibits here at CES year after year. In breadth of resources, it's unrivaled. In addition to its consumer electronics reach, add a movie studio that regularly produces box office favorites, a music label that showcases the best in every genre, and a professional group that covers everything from Hollywood to network news. Sony ties it all together into an intuitive and seamless consumer user experience. But don't just take my word for it. Our speaker this morning has personally been involved in many of Sony's achievements. Like Sony itself, Kazuo Hirai, president and CEO of Sony Corp, is a man of many talents. He's seen consumer electronics from all sides, from his successes with the Sony PlayStation business, to international work with music artists, to his leadership of Sony's network products and services initiatives. He also was a 2013 ESA champion honoree, where he was recognized as one of the most influential executives in the entertainment industry. He is uniquely qualified to continue Sony's leadership at the forefront of consumer electronics innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Sony's Kazuo Hirai. Hey, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gary, for that great introduction. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for being a part of the keynote this morning. And as Gary said, I know a lot of you had challenges coming in to Las Vegas. Uh, I'm glad you made it. And I'm uh, doubly honored with the fact that you've made it uh, you know, this morning to, uh, to our keynote. So ever since I was a boy, I've been curious. All sorts of things interested me, whether they are cars, science, gadgets, and of course, electronics. I was, and I still am, very inquisitive. Now, as you all know, childhood is a time of wonder and awe. It's a time when the whole world around us captivates our curiosity and our imagination. Our fascination with children's books to the questions about how things work, our experience as children, they're defined by play and by discovery. And one of my earliest memories was sitting in front of the television set watching Romper Room. I'm sure many of you watched it as well. It was an experience of magical connection and for me, emotional engagement with friends that I did not really know, but was relating to via my television. Now one day, I remember the hostess passing out cookies to the children on the show. I waited patiently and wondered where my cookie was. All the children on the television set, they were getting their cookie, and I kind of felt left out. How did these people arrive in my living room each and every day? Why couldn't they hear or see me? My curiosity was piqued and has continued to be throughout my life. And today, I suspect many of the people in this room, right here, like me, still hold on to at least a bit, at least a bit to their, of their childhood curiosity. Now, we choose to be engineers, inventors, and creators because we've retained our childlike wonder and imagination. And at Sony, we cultivate curiosity. Asking questions about how we might improve an everyday experience propels our desire at Sony to make things. 
And making things is a reflection of our desire at Sony to connect with people, to create surprises, to transform the ordinary into the extraordinary, and to inspire people to experience wow. Wow. Often, our curiosity stimulates creative thinking that yields those great innovations. For example, in 1979, the Sony Walkman became the first portable device that enabled a personal playlist, a favorite album, or that beloved mixtape, remember those? To go everywhere that people went. It was mobile, and I have to say, it was a wow. In 1982, the compact disc was introduced. This innovation improved recording, storage, and above all, sound quality. And I still remember the first time I heard a compact disc on, of course, a Sony CD player. And it was Billy Joel's 52nd Street. And it sounded incredible. That, to me, was a wow. In 1994, in Japan, we introduced PlayStation. And, of course, PlayStation became a game-changing home entertainment console. In fact, I was so wowed by PlayStation, I left the music business to pursue further development of the PlayStation franchise right here in the United States. And PlayStation proved that consumer electronic products could be more. It could be more than just a modern convenience. Devices could provide emotionally rich experiences. And today, our legacy of providing action-packed adventure takes another step forward with the launch of the PlayStation 4. The market wowed by our technology and by our engineering and by our software. The gamer thrilled by the lineup of amazing titles, they've responded enthusiastically around the world. And these innovative products created or redefined categories. And they are all the result of curious minds asking, what if? What if? They all emphasize the power of emotion in determining what has value to people. Myself, everybody in this room, everybody around the world. Mobility, enabled by the Walkman, awakened to the people to the idea that they could take their favorite stuff with them wherever they went. Not just because it was convenient, but because, but because it mattered to them. It matters to me, it matters to you. The compact disc delivered a more powerful listening experience, one that allowed people to feel, feel the music that they love. And of course, the PlayStation continues to shatter all conventional thinking about gameplay, social connection, and the emotional rush of epic adventures and innovative games. At the same time, however, there are challenges on the pathway to WoW. Making powerful, emotionally compelling products is not always a straight line. Sometimes at Sony, we zigzag our way to great innovations, and simply other times, we fail. You probably don't recognize or remember any of these products, but don't despair. Neither does the rest of the world, so it's OK. But you know, at Sony, failure is not really an end. It's a reason. It's a reason to keep trying. So we show you this. This is the Betamax. <laughs> now, despite Betamax being first to market and, dare I say, offering superior technology than that other format, <laughs> but I'll be the first to admit, VH VHS won the battle for commercial success. However, before you completely write off Betamax based on its failure to become the consumer standard, think about it as an idea. Take a look. Here's the headline for Betamax featured in an advertisement back in 1975. Watch whatever, whenever. 1975. This idea still resonates and defines everything people desire and expect even today. We're talking about freedom. We're talking about flexibility. We're talking about control over your own time. 
and choice, watching whatever, whenever. That was almost 40 years ago, 40 years ago. Now, as an interesting aside, by the way, Betamax, unfortunately, didn't have that consumer success that you know, we expected, but ultimately, it found its way as Betacam, a broadcast format with the same form factor as the Betamax, and became, as you probably know, especially the people in this room, the de facto standard in broadcast and professional industry, so all was not lost, as an aside. Anyway, so we continue to be driven by that desire to evolve this idea of unlimited and improved access of watching whatever, whenever, while at the same time meeting consumer demand for experiences that are untethered from conventional devices and conventional wisdom. But in an enterprise that makes things, we must first and foremost make that connection with people. Our product's value is measured by them. And we find that it's not just functional, uh, functional value that people desire, but the deeper and more elusive emotional value. Emotional value. And in Japanese culture, we call this kando. Kando translates to mean emotional involvement. The power to stimulate an emotional response. The power to make people say, Wow, all Sony products must be inspired by a spirit of kando. Advanced technologies and more elegant ergonomic designs are important ways products can seduce our sense of sight, sound, and touch. The wonder once associated with tangible products has been expanded by the migration of content, games, music, television, and a lot more to the cloud. However, even though the cloud promises a connected future, the cloud itself is not the wow. The wow happens when your senses are engaged, when you see the stunning visuals, when you hear the crisp sounds, when you feel the weight and balance of a perfectly designed device in your hands, when you are dazzled by a sublime form factor, when you are amazed at the ingenuity and cleverness of a technology that you never thought was possible. This, this, is the heart of Sony. Those tantalizing objects that not only deliver the wow, but in and of themselves are also the wow. Now, our 60 years of product design experience grants us Sony the historical perspective, the expertise, and the collective power to deliver wow to everybody's senses. And I expect all Sony employees to put wow at the center of their efforts. Product planners, hardware engineers, game creators, assembly line managers, my God, even corporate lawyers and finance professionals are all a part of an interconnected network of wow providers at Sony. And recently, we've started to deliver that wow again. Products like 4K, ultra high definition, when you see true native 4K content on a 4K television for the first time, that's a wow. Visuals giving you such detail that you can see the atmosphere, you can feel the atmosphere, almost like feeling like you can catch the dust particles dancing in a shaft of light. Or listening to high resolution audio using Sony's end-to-end -end high resolution recording, delivery, and playback systems. An entire generation, we all know this, an entire generation missed the visceral emotion of listening to uncompressed audio. The precision and clarity of every note. The moment when a singer takes his or her breath before the chorus. Getting goosebumps as a song reaches a crescendo. High-res audio allows a complete dynamic range of what the artist originally intended when they were in the recording studios creating their music. The RX-1 camera, the moment of pride when sharing a perfect picture. The RX-1 is a compact camera that empowers all photographers from the professionals creating art to parents capturing an important family memory with absolute uncompromised quality. Or the QX, the world's first lens style camera. Now, not only can you shoot using just a lens, but you can connect it to your smartphone and take the perfect shot and control the lens through your smartphone. And of course, PlayStation 4 is setting a new standard in gaming. 
Not only did we push the boundaries of play, but we also created a true object of sensation. And with remote play, you can seamlessly connect and transfer the action from PS4 directly to your PS Vita, experiencing a more intuitive and intelligent smartphone. The Sony Xperia Z1 harnesses the power, the power of the one Sony ethos. All of the Sony's, Sony company's deep expertise and knowledge combined to make a mobile device that is truly, that is truly the best of Sony and something that only Sony can deliver. Stunning visuals coming from our world-class TV group, groundbreaking digital image capturing systems from, of course, the world's best digital imaging engineers, audio technology, games, apps, and more. The elegance of the package belies the robust technological capability within making the Z1 a distinctly Sony design, a wow design. And across our studios, there is a commitment to surprise, provoke, and thrill our audiences. We continue to tell stories from the romantic to the heroic, to the epic, to the personal, to the delight of global audiences. And we don't consider any product a success unless we have delivered that wow, that wow. And today, our focus and drive is more deeply rooted in our philosophy of kando. And we're spending more and more time looking out at the world, at culture, at consumers, than looking within. And on the horizon, we see a next generation consumer that is different from any before them. Now, we think of them as generation remix. Born during the current millennium, they are true digital natives. Most of them know they knew how to use a touch screen, a tablet, a smartphone, a DVR by the time, by the time they were toddlers. Before they were born, a first wave of technological advancement required people to actually adapt te to technology. But look out for this generation who will bend it, who will bend it to their will. They will control the technology, not be controlled by it. Sampling, grabbing, curating, remixing will characterize the way they engage with technology and devices. They're no longer worshiping at the altar of technology. They will be their own arbiters of what has purpose, functionality, and creative potential. We expect them to bring a confidence about their own power to change the world, seeing technology as a tool to do exactly that. Now we have to ask ourselves, what will wow them? What will wow them? And it's important to remember that the wow factor does not sit still and wait for us. We must move towards new and often challenging definitions of that wow. Like, for example, the ability to see things differently. And the passion to provide technologies that will help people live longer, healthier, and more fulfilling lives. The creation of better content and improved delivery systems. And seamless and unlimited access to live television, movies, music, and games. Even the evolution of traditional boxes and frames into unconventional image surfaces that transform the places where we live, work, and play. I believe that these are the big ideas defining our course at Sony. Now, we can push the boundaries of what we can see, creating the potential for a better, safer, more visual, stunning human experience. And with our advanced sensing technologies, we're seeing in a completely new way. Advanced image sensors are providing an image-based reference to everything that we all care about. They transform how data from a family portrait to a vacation photo to even more complex data can be sensed and captured even, even when it cannot be seen by the human eye. This achievement from our Sony engineers creates a range of possibilities for future sensing technologies. First, of course, for the photo enthusiasts, there will soon be super sensitive cameras that enable amateur photographers to catch rich images with mood and, of course, with atmosphere. And the subtleties of great photographs will be more accessible to everyone, amateur photographers, enabling ease and simplicity to achieve tone and details that are often missed in conventional digital images. 
And to further advance the creative potential of our cameras, we're developing an advanced camera that consists of a complete array of image processors that provide real-time photo capturing options. And these allow for options that could only be controlled when a picture was taken in the past. But now, they can be manipulated after. So we're talking about background and foreground focus, color intensity, image enhancement, depth of field, and more. And never before has this been a tool, has there been a tool that can manipulate these core elements even after the photograph has been captured. And this gives extraordinary power to create the perfect, the perfect image that people are looking for. And our digital imaging is exceeding all expectations for what's possible. But we're not satisfied with simply advancing photography, although that's very important for us as well. Our sensing technologies have the potential to see the unseen. Capturing unseen data, including location, speed, wavelength, and so much more, will expand our perceptions and give us a new insight into the world in which we live. In the automotive segment, we're envisioning super speed sensing and processing technologies capable of generating images in color even when you're driving in the dark. The sensitivity to detect and analyze various aspects of the driver's physical condition, as well as obviously the continuous monitoring of the driver's environment, the road surface, weather conditions, pedestrian locations, oncoming vehicles, they all promise improved passenger and pedestrian safety. In agriculture, the ability to sense CO2 consistency and other critical agricultural variables like weather, soil condition, and readiness for harvest will help people know when to pick the vegetables or fruit at peak season, detect disease in crops, even identify the freshness of perishables in grocery stores. From agricultural to consumer application, the ability to capture data on food products and other consumables in real time at the point of purchase, that will facilitate safer consumption while promising, of course, higher crop yields for farmers and food producers. And for those seeking to look and feel their best. We recently talked and introduced the development of what we call the Smart Skin Evaluation Program with image sensors that can evaluate skin conditions in extreme close-up to provide individualized measurement and analysis of various elements of the skin, such as texture, blemishes, pores, brightness, and coloring. Now this provides a basis for more targeted skin care and, if necessary, advanced treatments. Advanced image sensors can make it possible to capture a blood vessel to actually see various data such as the level of oxygen saturation or blood sugar. And this data can be utilized when combined with smartphones, wearables that provide constant monitoring by a doctor who can deliver individualized and concierge-like care. So consider the countless benefits of combining sensor technologies, the systems, and the cloud. Medical data, with obviously the individual's permission, can be shared remotely with a doctor using a secured system. And with the ability to see and track symptoms and diagnostics, doctors can actually communicate with people as needed, even when those folks are unable to visit a physical office to see their doctors. And within our medical business group, Sony technologies are being readapted by healthcare experts to achieve seemingly impossible outcomes. For example, Using our 4K and 3D display technologies, surgeons can see their operation in vivid detail, providing them advanced tools delivering a precision once inconceivable in a surgical setting. Through the development of more advanced sensors that in turn enables advanced imaging technology, surgery will be safer and patient outcomes will continue to improve. These technologies are built from Sony's vast expertise. Bringing together our brightest engineers to lead the way in developing technology, technologies and products that enable healthcare providers to see with greater clarity, hear with improved fidelity, and work together in the pursuit of an improved human experience. Now, another important dimension of the human experience is, of course, entertainment. Culture, the arts, music, games, and all forms of creative expression gives our lives meaning. And one of the greatest pleasures that I have is in harnessing the creativity of our vast talent network at Sony. 
Across that network, we're asking ourselves how technology can drive better content and better delivery. How new technologies can evolve and enrich the way we tell our stories. Beyond greater choice in where and when to access entertainment, we're seeing a movement towards more sophisticated storytelling that is driving new levels of engagement. And Sony Pictures is exhilarated by this changing media landscape. So to talk more about this new world of content creation, I'd like to welcome the CEO of Sony Entertainment and the chairman and CEO of Sony Pictures Entertainment, Michael Linton, and the Emmy Award winning creator of Breaking Bad, Mr. Vince Gilligan. Great to see you guys. Hi Vince. Hi. Michael, how are you? Well, thanks for uh, being a part of the keynote. Oh, thank you for having thanks me. For, uh, for stopping by. So, um, getting right into it, uh, Michael and I, uh, we've talked a lot over the past year about uh, how new delivery systems of content to, to c customers and consumers around the world are changing the way or the kind of content that we, we produce. And I wanted to first get, Michael, your take on it from a business perspective and then uh, from a creative perspective um, from Vince. So, Michael, how, do, how does it... How has it changed in terms of the technology that we see in delivery? It, it's, it's, it's really changed dramatically and principally because of the, 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 the new SVOD services that have come into the market, both here in the United States as well as everywhere else in the world. And so all of a sudden now, um, you have five or six SVOD services which are competitively bidding on television series and films that right. we're making that never existed before in, in first run um, showings as well as in syndication. So it's, it's changed both the marketplace as well as the economics of the business for mm -hmm. us, both in the, for the positive. Right. And how has it changed the, the creative process? Well, one example is uh, when I was starting off in TV about 20 years ago, the conventional wisdom at the time was uh, that serialized storytelling uh, was, was to be avoided at all right. costs. Uh, so one episode basically completes the story. Exactly. Right. Our episodes back then typically were more compartmentalized uh -huh. and you could watch them out of order and you didn't have to see every episode of a TV show right. like the X-Files, which I got my start on. And with these SVOD services, it's, it's, it's really, uh, it allows for a, a serialized uh, sort of storytelling and in fact even a hyper-serialized form of storytelling that we that we employed on, on Breaking Bad. It allows people to, to catch back up uh, whenever they feel like it, any time of the day or night, and, and it's, it's been wonderful for us. And that also, I guess, uh, kind of uh, creates that uh, binge watching yeah, um, binge of watch. people through network services. I tell you, that uh, phrase didn't even exist four or five years ago, I feel like. It right. just, uh, it's a brave new world in, in TV these days. Right. And then uh, in terms of, uh, we talked about delivery, but in terms of technologies, that are uh, part of the creative process. So whether we're talking, obviously, high definition, uh, 3D, uh, or 4K, uh, you know, how are some of these new technologies um, impacting the way you create content or that creative process? Well, I tell you, one great example is uh, the amazing image capturing uh, technology that, that, that exists now and that, uh, that, that Sony is uh, at, a forefront, at the forefront on. These, these tiny little cameras which exist now, we typically shoot our show on, on, on you know, motion picture cameras, big, big, bulky, expensive ones. But every now and then, with these tiny new cameras that exist, uh, we can put cameras anywhere. We can put them in the back of a mailbox. We can put them in the wheel well of a car. We can have Walt driving his car over top of one of them or smashing into one of them. And, and you can put these things anywhere, and they intercut very well with the typical motion picture uh, So the, the quality that you get from these small cameras, um, if it's especially a short uh, snippet or yeah. a short scene, is... Yeah perfectly usable in yeah. TV shows then. No one, uh, folks in the business that I work with never notice when we intercut uh, one of these shots. And these cameras are great because as I say, they'll fit anywhere, but also they're inexpensive in a way right. that I can't even believe how inexpensive they are. And we can therefore risk risk breaking them. We, we, we don't try encourage not, that. We, we, don't, we try not <laughs> exactly. to break them. Yeah, yeah. But I tell you, if it's, uh, if it's it comes down to between like a $300 camera and a million dollar shot, I'll break the 300 camera Three hundred dollar camera in day, any day of the week. You know, that's a great that's a great freeing bit of uh, of, of technology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
So Michael, from a business perspective, um, are, are you looking at new, other new technologies or uh, new services that you, know, you see further potential in growing the viewership from a business perspective going forward? Well, it's yes on the services front, but it's actually more on the device front because when you really look at what's going on with the mobility of devices, whether it's tablets or smartphones, um, what, what we're seeing is that people are now watching television shows or movies in places they never would have done so before. You were sort of only allowed to watch them pretty much in your home, frankly. Right. And now, you know, whether it's on a bus or a train or even out in the park, you see people watching our, our shows and, 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 our, and our films. And that really expands the market dramatically because people have a lot more time to do it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Michael just talked about you know, various devices, but you know, as, in the creative process, do you think about, for example, uh, a lot of audiences that are going to be enjoying content ultimately on smaller screens like tablets or even smartphones? I mean, does that figure into the creative process as well? It's, you know, I'll, I'll take viewership any way I can get it. Right, and if right. folks are watching uh, Breaking Bad on a, on, a, on a lovely Xperia phone, for instance. You hear that, Xperia Z. That's a good plug. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, and I'm all for that. Uh, in my mind's eye, of course, uh, you know, being a bit grandiose in my vision for the, the show, I want to I wanna picture folks watching it. On a on a big beautiful uh, monitor, right? Uh, and and I tell you, these 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 giant screen TVs now, as as exemplified by like the Bravia series, allow folks like me to to change the way we uh, compose shots in television. Historically, television uh, was composed for 19-inch black and white TVs. Well, and, I remember those. Yeah, yep. and you'd you'd frame like this. You'd cut into the forehead, and and you know it was a lot of series of talking heads uh, cut back and forth. But with these giant wide TV screens now, you get to frame, you know, uh, on your best day, you try to emulate uh, John Ford or Akira Kurosawa or, or Sergio Leone, and you, you get to frame, in the case of Breaking Bad, you get to show these little characters on this, this broad, endless expanse of, of uh, New Mexico prairie with the beautiful clouds overhead and the mountains in the background, and it gets to look very painterly and very cinematic. And that's just, that's a, a wonderful, uh, development. So it's always exciting to see new technologies uh, evolving that really helps to really uh, add more or change the creative process. Oh, then. Absolutely. So you obviously keep an eye out on developing technologies and uh, I, I, I absolutely and I'm, I'm looking forward to you know the, the, I'm looking forward to this uh, this headset device this uh, the head mount display the head mount display I want to I want to check that out because you know it's one thing to watch an 85 inch TV it's which is amazing but it's another thing still to see what is it, 100 and 750? Uh, 750, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, that's like, yes. wow, just to be enveloped, to, to, to allow folks to be enveloped by the storytelling, uh, whether it's Breaking Bad or whether it's, you know, uh, you know, as a fan, if I could be enveloped by The Godfather or enveloped right. by uh, Jackie Brown, one of my favorite Tarantino movies, it just, it's, it's a, I'm looking forward to that. So uh, obviously we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we bring new technologies to you uh, so that you can further, you know, uh, develop and improve upon the creative process um, and bring more exciting content to, uh, to audiences around the world. And uh, I hear you're working on a spin-off to uh, Breaking Bad. Yes, uh, we are doing uh, uh, Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul. Which is our, our, our wonderful, uh, crazy uh, uh, lawyer character. Yeah, right on, <laughs> Saul Goodman. Right on. <laughs> Uh, we are plugging away. My writers back in Burbank are plugging away as we speak, and uh, I am, of course, here. Uh, I'd rather be here. This is more fun than being in a writer's room. But we're looking forward to having that within about a year. We're very much looking forward to it. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, for, thanks for stopping by. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, Michael, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Michael and Vince. Now, Clearly, as Vince and Michael talked about, integrating existing formats with new technologies is providing a better and more convenient viewing experience. And our vision, and one we're uniquely positioned to shape, is to continue to further the integration of the world of consumer electronics and entertainment. And in the world of gaming, technology is also providing exciting new potential for storytelling and immersive play. So one great example of playful curiosity can be found in where else but the bucolic countryside of England. Meteor Molecule, 
one of our game development studios, is a team of true inventive minds. They continue to inspire me with their passion and unique brand of offbeat creativity. They are creating gaming experiences that are wildly imaginative. Their blockbuster title, Little Big Planet, introduced an entirely new and different kind of gaming experience featuring a playful environment built by the users and encouraging sharing and connection. And the community grew, and today, Little Big Planet is inhabited by millions of people inspired by participating in the creation of this whimsical world. This game heralded things to come. And today, their recently released and very highly acclaimed title called Tearaway validates the power of individual contributions to the gaming experience. And Media Molecule have been outspoken advocates for the PlayStation 4, calling PlayStation the ultimate creative console. So recently, we spent some time in England capturing the joy, exhilaration, and of course the frustrations and the successes of their creative process. And because, as you all creators know, the creative process is one of the most rewarding, yet challenging, professional and artistic journeys. So please take a look. One of the things you have to do in any creative industry, and I think in uncreative industry as well, it's the same. You have to have belief. You have to want something. The genesis of Media Molecule was when five friends with a huge amount of experience in the industry walked into a boardroom at Sony and said, hey, we want to make a game about knitting and buttons and user-generated content, except we didn't even know it was called that at that point. We thought, there's no way that they're going to go for this. Creativity is just a fundamental thing that we do as humans. Like, there's nothing special or magical. It's not that thing where you wake up with a cool idea. Perhaps that's the starting point. But then you need to take that idea and sort of kindle that flame and then put huge amounts of effort into seeing whether that works. If you're not surprised and stunned by what you've done, it's very unlikely that someone else will. Just do, 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 do. You do 10, 20 things, one of them is going to be good. That's the attitude. And we don't know which one. Let's choose together later. When you think this is going to be cool, but I don't know whether that's going to work then you're definitely exploring something that perhaps no one's tried before. Then you're innovating. You can't ship something as complicated as a game without embracing a mixture of iteration and explosion and evolution and then sometimes that crazy idea. In reality, you need to try things out, you need to experiment and you need to fail. And one of the most amazing things about failing is it gives you a new constraint. It's like, I went down that road, that road was painful. But that's cool, because now you've given yourself a new kind of wall to push off. Love the good as well as the bad, because it might be the bad that actually leads to something much better than where you thought you were heading in the first place. You need that combination of a spark of a sideways thought or, a, or an inspiration that you got. But then to combine that with the tenacity to actually see that through into something that, that ships. You have to take risks. And so in a way, releasing a product is a creative experience in and of itself. One of the beautiful things of working here is that we get a lot of rope to play with ideas and experiment. But it's grounded in the idea that in the end, it's a commercial product that has to reach an audience. And that's rewarding. I want people to play our games so that people can enjoy it on a grand scale. So Media Molecule doesn't exist in a vacuum. We exist within the larger picture of Sony. I'm so lucky that we've been allowed to take risks in certain key places, and the result is the games that we've made. So, as you just saw in that video, Media Molecule is a perfect example of the type of highly ambitious, highly creative makers of Kando, that wow, that we nurture at Sony. So whether they're making games or encouraging gamers to make things on their own, theirs is the realm of creativity, whimsy, and of course, fun. Producing great content is just one step in enhancing, in enhancing how people experience entertainment. 
And today, we're in the process of evolving the business of how people access the entertainment they want. The tethers that have constrained entertainment consumption for decades, since the very first radio waves and the TV signals were beamed into our homes and game cartridges were inserted into console, will soon dissolve. In fact, we're already making considerable progress in pioneering a new era of freedom and choice for the movies, TV shows, music, and the games that you always want at your fingertips. So to tell you more about how Sony is evolving access to entertainment content, please welcome the president and group CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment and Sony's ex executive in charge of Sony Network Entertainment, Andrew House. Thank you, Kaz, for having me here today. Uh, the excitement at CES is always invigorating as all eyes are on the industry's best, most innovative, and most promising new products. PlayStation is no stranger to the profound impact of a breakthrough product and how it can cause people to rethink what is possible. As many of you are aware, we recently introduced a little product called PlayStation 4 uh, to some great fanfare around the world. It quickly became the largest console launch ever, selling over 2.1 million units in just two weeks. And today, I am delighted to announce that the cumulative sell-through has now passed 4.2 million units as of December 28th. Thank you. The PS4 embodies the type of technological advancement people have come to expect from PlayStation uh, for the past 20 years. While I'm extremely proud of the incredible sophistication of the PS4 hardware, that is the physical and tangible aspects of the most powerful system we've ever created, I'm equally proud of what you can't touch and feel. I'm of course talking about the network that sits at the core of PS4 and all PlayStation platforms. The network delivers virtually unlimited opportunities for our customers and represents the future of our industry. Sony's network vision is to deliver rich entertainment experiences that empower you to discover, connect, and engage with your favorite content on virtually any device when and how you want. If you own a PlayStation system today, the network enables you to easily connect with friends to unlock the full potential of games and it gives you access to an incredible library of titles. In fact, PlayStation's library of titles is one of the most expansive in the world, filled with memorable experiences that have kept gamers entertained for years. As we built the new network, we asked ourselves, what if we could unlock PlayStation's library of games so that they're instantly available on PlayStation devices as well as non-PlayStation devices? We've been steadfast in our commitment to make this a reality and have made incredible advancements towards integrating Gaikai's advanced cloud-based technology into our network. The result is nothing short of amazing and marks the beginning of a new era of streamed gaming that eliminates traditional barriers without compromising the quality of gameplay. I'm pleased to announce the new streaming game service, PlayStation Now. This service will, in the long term, provide existing PlayStation gamers with instant access to the games they loved from previous generations, from the original PlayStation, PS2, and PS3. Equally important, the service will also introduce the world of PlayStation to even non-console owners via smartphones, televisions, and other devices. Soon, playing your favorite PS3 game on a tablet will be a reality. And actually, you can try PlayStation Now on Sony Bravia TVs and PlayStation Vita systems in the Sony booth this week at CES. For the first time ever, for the first time ever, you can play blockbuster PS3 titles, including PlayStation Game of the Year, The Last of Us, and beyond, on a Bravia or PS Vita exclusively at the show. Streaming the rich, high-definition gameplay experience delivered by The Last of Us 
with low latency is a remarkable achievement, and it demonstrates how we are paving the way for gamers to play whenever and wherever. We've heard that earlier on. We are also going to offer gamers choice when it comes to how they want to access content on PlayStation Now. So they'll be able to rent by title for specific games they're interested in, and we'll also offer a subscription model that delivers additional value and allows people to explore a range of titles that they might otherwise not have experienced. I'm pleased to confirm that we will begin a closed beta in the US at the end of January with an expected full rollout this summer. Sony's network vision for revolutionizing entertainment through cloud-based services isn't confined to games. For years, consumer electronics companies have tried in various forms to transform the living room and the home entertainment experience because it is fundamentally outdated and flawed. In a technology era that is defined by simplicity and improving people's lives by making things more intuitive, personal, and social, elegantly combining live TV, video on demand, and DVR content remains the last frontier. Sony's vision for the future of home entertainment is grounded in giving you the freedom and choice for what you watch, when you want to watch it, and what you want to watch it on. Our goal is to transform the user experience so finding and discovering live TV and video on demand shows is intuitive and immediate. We will make TV a more personalized and dynamic experience that caters to your preferences and adapts to your viewing habits. Today, I'm thrilled to announce that Sony will introduce a new cloud-based TV service in the US this year that combines the live TV content people love most about cable with the dynamic experience they've come to expect from digital media services. The service will give you the most popular live TV programs combined with a large library of video on-demand content so people will have all of their favorite movies, TV shows, and sports programs available through a single destination. The service is distinguished by an intuitive and dynamic interface that gets to know you, as well as personalized channels that cater to your tastes. If a family member enters the room and picks up the controller, they can immediately access their own personalized menu. It also solves one of the greatest hurdles to live TV and digital media services, ease of content access. Our offering will enable you to quickly search and discover across live and video on demand content using intuitive, dynamic filters without having to use multiple boxes. You'll also be able to discover new channels by seeing what your friends are watching and recommending or by your viewing history. The service also provides the ability to watch and resume across various connected devices, so you can seamlessly switch viewing live TV or video on demand content from a PS4 in the living room to an iPad in another bedroom. No other company in the world is better poised to lead the TV revolution than Sony. There are more than 70 million internet-enabled Sony devices in US living rooms today, including 25 million PlayStation 3 systems. And millions of people already rely on Sony for their video needs. In fact, based on the number of users streaming videos on any given day, our network would rank among the top five cable and satellite providers in the US. And PlayStation 3 is the number one device in the world for watching Netflix in the living room. Sony's new cloud-based live TV and video on demand service will redefine the ease and accessibility of live television, video on demand, and DVR viewing experiences. And while it might be a revolutionary experience for our customers, the new service is a natural evolution of Sony's offerings. We are one of the largest entertainment companies in the world and will use our unique combination of network services, innovative devices, content properties, and network partnerships to usher in a new era of home entertainment. There will be more details forthcoming, but the future is very near. We plan to start testing this service in the US later this year. Thank you very much for your time.
Thank you, Andy. A more robust network entertainment delivery system will be a hallmark of Sony as we move into the future. We will be offering customers a single source of entertainment that is less complicated, more cost effective, and more accessible than ever before. Now, at the beginning of this presentation, I shared with you about my childhood and how I became enchanted by what might be possible. And that curiosity has continued to grow within me, and today I'm even more excited and inspired by what might be next. And my passion for electronics has grown throughout my life. But more than that, my conviction about creating a Sony culture with a commitment, a commitment to deliver products with emotional value has matured and evolved over time. Now today, Sony offers a vast array of products, televisions, game consoles, image capture, and mobile devices, professional broadcast equipment. These products enable us to provide people with content, entertainment, and social connection. However, these products also have certain limitations. So in looking forward, as Andy described, our desire is to break out of the confinements of physical places or even primary devices as the only points of access. The conventional boundaries are being transformed, if not vanishing altogether. Sony will be releasing products in the very near future that will create an entirely new concept of consumer electronics. These concepts will reshape our personal media landscape and transform our living spaces into evolving environments. We're envisioning and creating a world where people can enjoy, where you can enjoy, new ways of experiencing entertainment freely and without the restrictions of frames, boxes, and displays. The essence of this vision is a new and emerging concept that we call the life space UX concept. And one of the first steps we're taking in breaking free of the traditional screen or device is the ultra short throw projector. This state-of-the-art device can be placed anywhere in the home, turning the environment into a dynamic living space. Normal walls will become fluid displays. Our new concept, LifeSpace UX, does more than just eliminate boundaries. This new vision creates a brand new sensual and atmospheric experience that utilizes space, space itself. For example, you can create a window with a view of the outside which transitions throughout the day to your own liking. Or you can turn your favorite movie scenes into wall art with gradual transitions bringing mood and atmosphere to the places where you live and work. And I've seen this awe-inspiring and wow-inspiring product in action. So the other day, as I stood in my office on the 20th floor at Sony headquarters in Tokyo, and I looked at a wall, a perfect window formed, revealing a view of a street scene in the Ginza. And what was beyond that wall, the street scene, pedestrians, cars, taxis, buildings, and public spaces, all to perfect scale, was displayed in vivid 4K image quality on that wall-sized canvas. And to me, it opened up countless possibilities. Imagine being an avid surfer and having the perfect wall-sized window to see the world's best surf spots vividly in real time in your living room. Or perhaps you can't make the concert tonight, and now you and your friends can have a private skybox view. And with its stylish design, this ultra short throw projector enables a cinematic-like experience to be wherever you want it to be. It's easy to install, and is capable of projecting a 147-inch 4K image just by placing the projector near the bottom of any wall. And I'm happy to announce that the first version of this product will be available to consumers right here in the United States this summer. This, thank you. This is only the first step on the way to a new reality, one in which the user, one in which you are able to control content in entirely new ways. So as we consider the possibilities of the borderless environment, 
we're also exploring other types of future-oriented products that break free from conventional screens and boxes. So for example, our tabletop screen takes information and projects it onto a flat or even a convex surface in high quality that can be controlled by your fingertips. So imagine using the surface of, say, a dining table, dining room table, as a giant touch screen where you can video chat with traveling members of your family or map a vacation in an exotic locale or just share images by sliding them across the table on your dining table. This technology brings content to the center of the household, untethered by devices. This technology, the technology driving this innovation is built around a super small laser projector and intelligent processing systems that catches the movement of our fingertips using a highly accurate depth recognition algorithm. It is, to me, a very transformative technology bringing what was formerly only accessible on a screen, again, right to the heart of the home. So soon, the home, the office, the places where you and I need and want to be will be perhaps free from traditional notions of frames. And what lives beyond those home displaces are transformative space technologies. So the life space UX is precisely the type of visionary concept that Sony is uniquely qualified to lead because once again, it is rooted in Kando, delivering that wow. That is integrating software and hardware and content to deliver magical human experiences that evoke emotion and reverberate across all of our categories. These innovations help people see the world as both expansive and accessible, a place of limitless potential for learning, knowledge, well-being, connection, laughter, and of course, joy. And that matters deeply to me and to all of Sony. I believe the mission of Sony is to inspire and fulfill people's curiosity around the world. I believe that we must have a unified single vision and a one Sony ethos. And I believe it's time to move beyond the just good enough era. No more commodity products, no more parity products, no more just good enough products. We must and we can do better. And I believe people care deeply about the products that define their lives, your lives. These products must be fantastic objects of sensation that engage all of our senses. And I believe we must empower our creators, designers, and engineers to be curious, to take risks and make great products that deliver kando. I encourage them to follow their passions. I, and I expect them to always strive, to fight, to dig deep inside themselves and create the products that they can be proud of, to make products that are worthy of the four letters S-O-N-Y. And I believe that products created with pride will in turn instill a pride of ownership and create meaningful emotional value with all of our consumers. And finally, I believe in the power of wow. I am optimistic looking forward and envisioning a Sony that is conceived for the future. And I am optimistic about the role that consumer electronics will play in advancing the human experience. If we are all truly curious, not just Sony, if we are all truly curious, if we listen to what people desire and anticipate the needs of future generations, we will find that we must make innovative products that integrate functional value, but more importantly, emotional value. And we must remember, we are an industry, all of us, we're an industry built on wow. So I encourage everyone to come to the Sony CES booth and please be moved. Thank you very much and have a great CES. Thank you.